the labels, because I'm homeless, because I'm an addict, uh, but because I, I'm manic depressive, uh, all those things, he, he's, he's chosen his own path. Let's, let's let him walk it. My name is Roger, I'm 48 years old. Um, I lost my mom and my brother and sister when I was seven years old. My mom committed suicide and took my brother and sister with her. She was 28 years old, she had cocaine, alcohol, abusive husband, abusive relative, and it was an escape for her. You lose your mom and brother and sister when you're seven, you lose your best friend when you're 11, and then you lose your girlfriend when you're 14. You know, well, I'm not getting attached to people. This love thing, this it's real neat and dandy for a couple months, but, but look at the repercussions when you lose it. And so even just subconsciously, that nice little glass fence around you, it, it stays there and turns to steel after a while. After high school, I got a job in the mines, making 22 bucks an hour. I got a Ford Explorer, put a down payment on a house. Uh, I was not out of high school a year, and I was already king of the castle. And then a year later, I got laid off. Uh, and I got a job for Via Rail here in Toronto. And then I smoked a joint on my coffee break, and, uh, and the boss came out, and so I got fired, and I got uh, involved with uh, the crack cocaine. I met a beautiful woman. She slept with me by the railroad tracks. I would go and do all my hustling and everything uh, to, to get money for drugs and we'd, we'd stay high. And she got pregnant and uh, and, 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 and that was enough, and we both stopped. Uh, we stopped, we stopped, cold turkey, like, 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 like this. And then we saved up some money, and we went to Quebec uh, to her family. And she went through the last uh, three months of her pregnancy, and uh, my daughter was born. I'd lost a lot in my life, but, but, but to become the father that I never had, all my shortcomings were forgotten. All my prayers were answered. I worked on the back of a garbage truck. I'd get home and I'd take my shower and then I'd uh, wrap up my daughter and take her for a walk in her $200 stroller. And put a lot of love and caring into my, my daughter, but I forgot about my precious uh, baby mother. And uh, it, we kind of grew apart because I like uh, the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac and she likes uh, the Backstreet Boys. She met somebody her own age. Um, um, it's probably the most unselfish thing I've ever done in my life, but my love doesn't have chains and fences and stuff like that. And I said, well, go, go do it. I came back to Toronto. A month later, I called. He picked up the phone and says, hey, so huh, how does that make you feel? Your daughter calls me daddy. And, and it, was like, it was like a sucker punch for me, and it gave me an excuse to stay here. I was putting the labels on my, my forehead now while well, you're a, a deadbeat father and this and that and that. You had it all and you lost it again. And I started using again. Um, now for three years, I haven't, I haven't even talked to them. Ever since I left uh, uh, Quebec, I'm under uh, a bridge. I stay under that bridge because it's the suffering that I deserve. 
If you're not there being the father, then you, you, you belong there. That determination just to get high so you don't have to feel cold or hungry or anything else, not even you doing it, it's just, it's just patternistic. And, and it's hard to break those patterns. There's a better life out there, most definitely. And drugs and alcohol and everything in the whole world can't compare to, 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 to fatherhood. It's gonna be a long haul, but I'm, I'm determined to, to get back there. I still deserve uh, another chance. Everybody does. Just pretend that you didn't have those good upbringing or that education or that job or that breakfast that you just had. Wouldn't wouldn't you want them to just to just stop and say hi? Are you okay? Uh, people they, they feel so much better because they reach into their pocket and they give them a toonie and and stuff like that. But 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 it's gonna take more than toonies to to to, to get that person help lend that extra, extra ear, even just five minutes, uh, you'll never, ever, ever fathom uh, uh, how much of a nudge in the right direction that is. And if a couple people can do that, um, it'll get people back on their feet. Aside from good leaders and, and, and good resources and good hospitals, aside from all of it, just start caring more. Um, um, it, it makes a big difference for, for people who haven't had much of it. <laughs>